been back in the room, exactly. Let's have a look. Uh, oh, let's no, check no, out where... No, no, no Lars on the phone. No, she's not on the phone today. She is, is, is busy, busy. So, yeah, we're going to check if we're live. Um, Jimmy Chin there. Good old Jimmy Chin. Um, as I'm on Facebook, let's have a little look. I almost have a feeling that we are live, Dave. There it, for... it is, mate. There it is, mate. Look. It's weird. It's always weird. It's like Inception. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everyone. How you doing? Um, a bit strange today. We're in the same room, Dave. What's going on? Yeah. On jour, Mark. On jour. <laughs> on jour. I'm going to say on jour to Mark now every time we see him. But yeah, we're back in the same room today. Mm. Um, it's pretty pretty hectic. Um, and uh, he Pretty hectic sort of couple of weeks, really. People going on trips. A lot are happening. Um, so the guys next door are super busy. So we thought, right, let's come in. Uh, and have our have our own little um, Tuesday tune in back yeah. in the Yeti game, mate. It feels like it's been a while since we've been in here. Well, you're in here every week. No, I I I do enjoy. Uh, I, get the kicked, I got kicked out. <laughs> right. uh, sorry, mate. I kicked you out ages ago. Yeah. Um, nothing to do with COVID. But then I got kicked back out of the room I was kicked into. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So. Um, well, hey guys. Anyway, so Andre to Mark, uh, David, uh, Shona, Jim, uh, Laura. We got Leah all the way from Australia. Great to see you, Leah. Uh, Leah only Leah's only here for Lauren. So should we tell her that Lauren's not with us today? Uh, we should probably because, say that Lauren's not on the comments because today. Because if uh, Leah can just duck out now, then I think. Because <laughs> she's only here for the koala chat with Lauren, I think. She is. Uh, Dave Ribbington, Sital, Stuart, Bry, of course. Supposed to be loaded Land Dave Rovers. Ribbington, I was just singing his praises. You were. Literally. I, I did. I, Your name is hanging around the office, Dave. Uh, because uh, at the moment, um, as... Many of you are going on trips this season, may be aware. Yeah. I'm chasing everyone for their flights and passports. If you haven't already put them in, uh, email them to me, upload them. Yeah, like Dave, what a legend. He uploaded three passports in one in one thing, in one spell. Nice. Swoop. Organized. Spell. Well, he's good with the old. I, I've seen a few. Uh, I think he, he did a picture of you, which was Photoshopped. And I think you were at the yeah. gym doing this. And then actually, you know, he put you yeah, no, somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, he is sort of an online sort of... Um, I'm not going to go as far as to say he's not like a troll of mine, but he, uh, he definitely does uh, keep me on my toes. You know, I, I have to double and triple check any pictures of me that attack. <laughs> Dave's eyes look like he's holding in a poop. Um, <laughs> 40, Is that true, Dave? Because am 40, I going to have to open the door? 40% right, I'd say. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just the way it is. Brilliant. Can't wait for the an hour of, of Dave needing, needing to go to the toilet. Can't wait for that. Yeah. Um, if I'm going to lean, I'll sort of lean this way and so I can... I suppose we've we've shared tents, we've shared rooms, we've shared memories. Yeah, it'll be fine. Um, but right, anyway, um, yeah, bit, bit kind of different today. But we wanted to to go back to. It, it felt like probably over a year actually since we probably talked about this. I know we've touched on it during certain lives. Is around mindset, and you know we now we're running trips again, and we're we're seeing people out there that are going through these challenges. And then seeing the pictures that are coming back and and, and, and kind of seeing the, the stories that are being told, it, it kind of reminds us, I think, how important mindset is. Um, you know, I even had a, an email um, uh, probably about an hour ago now, I was just reading from James. I don't think I had a chance to show you. Um, and James is a good friend of ours, and he came with us to, to Everest, Bay, uh, not Everest Base Camp, to Kilimanjaro. You mean, you mean, uh, you mean Tembo? Tembo, yeah, yeah. Tembo, he, yeah. He sent us a, an awesome email. And, and again, just around sharing some things around mindset and um, also, as well, I had a, a, an email from Heather, um, Heather, who I think is actually on the live, uh, who uh, recently, I think it was last week, returned, uh, who did Killy and, and summited Killy. And it was great to, to have some sort of comments from Heather yeah, as well. Newman. I'm actually going to call you later, actually, Heather. Um, be nice to, catch, nice to catch, catch up, up with the things yet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and also, Leah has now said, hi, Fee. But the way I look at it, like, it's a little bit desperate. It's like, hi, Fee. <laughs> Someone over the day. There's no one on the phone today. We're going to have to try and do our best to kind of muddle through. It's been a really we busy week. So like I said, that's why I've been kicked out of my desk back into the room that I was once kicked out of by Andy. Um, but unfortunately, I can see Fee. She's by there. <laughs> I can see you, Lauren. They're all kind of like busy in a way. But um, yeah, just us today. So It is just us. But you know, we're, um, that we're all good. Does that mean a professionalism? Uh, we, we never. What does it use to say? You never let professionalism get in the way of a good show. So that's yeah. the case. Um, but yeah, so with, with mindset, it is a bit of a, it's one of those, isn't it? We, in anything in life, we're saying, oh yeah, you have to have strong mindset. You have to be positive. You know, there's lots of these things, um, you know, and, and they can kind of get sort of poo pooed away if you like, you know, yeah. but I, I, I honestly believe, and I, and I, and I know, and I understand that 
it is the, the the muscle and i think you've said this numerous times it's the muscle that gets sort of exercised least um you know and obviously i know it's not technically a muscle but it's in terms of how you use it and 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 to to its best um is something that really isn't focused on that much and i think if we could bring it to the fore to say that you know anytime you can um you can use this to you know be a better effect you these challenges will become not easier but you know certainly more achievable yeah. um you know and, and heather i mean i'll i'll bring up what heather actually said because when i was bringing up her emails i wish that we were really organized dave this and is, i had these this is exactly hand. what happens when we lose <laughs> is this what we because assist. heather was saying this is where seamless, is she? I know. seamless heather um it's all good guys literally um uh, just just keep saying heather, heather. <laughs> as long as we can <laughs> heather's gonna be like you know when you say a word I'll, I'll, I'll dig out her information in a minute um let's yeah. have a little look because some of the things that she did say was around you know how she it was almost that the summit wasn't really she was going to struggle she might have actually thought about turning around um you know that's the, the the general crux of it that we got on there but she didn't and she got the summit and i know that sometimes is that internal battle um heather if you're on the the live because i did see your your name pop up um yeah, put some comments in there. It's always great to see, you know, maybe some of the things that you you, you pushed through at the time because I know it's super fresh. Yeah, you know, you're one of our ever trackers who have just come back from Killy, and it's great just to hear about, you know, maybe when you on because it's a long night, isn't it? That you you start hiking at you know about half ten, eleven o'clock, all the way through to the early hours. You know, what what was the kind of moments for you, Heather, that kind of like, okay, this could be I either turn around or you know we keep going was was there any big moments there and i'm always interested to hear hear about those moments you know yeah oh a little bit, a bit of love from amanda I know. Hilton, about my north face stuff it is isn't it it's quite um it's very colorful it's quite bright and colorful and um i would even go as far as to say inclusive it is inclusive yeah i like it it's one of my favorites this is we, we should get sponsored by north face because i'm sure i'm wearing north face as well somewhere <laughs> somewhere I've got north face on. i know but uh, no yeah you are right touching on the mindset thing yeah and um it was really interesting to now trips are starting to come back because over the last sort of two years we've had to really kind of adjust our mindset in terms of yeah. tackling other challenges that weren't expected so you know trips being postponed and having put in all the effort in preparation for one that isn't going to happen at least not then yeah and then a year down the line it's going to happen and then it's rescheduled again it's a different type of mental mind, uh, toughness that we've had to kind of well not necessarily toughness but there's another word i'm trying to think of that i was taught before which is about sort of you know it, it's not necessarily just the toughest people and the you yeah. know the, the the sas people of the world that are able to do these things it's about sort of building some resilience and resilience i think is one of the biggest things that you'll experience and learn about yourself when you go on these trips yeah you'll learn how resilient you can be and and um you know how you can deploy mindset because again um i think i've talked about him a lot less last week but yeah the the mind will give up long before the body does yeah it does and by putting yourself out of the comfort zone by pushing yourself against you know these challenges that you may not always be confident that you're going to do and sometimes you may not always achieve but mm. it's about finding those barriers it's <clears> really good yeah definitely i did actually find them what i ever said and I, i'll read it um just want to say that i believe that attitude is everything I, I when i was reading that heather i did think it was altitude um but attitude is everything i could have quite easily uh quit on the summit night the other week and quite early on too but i had a word of myself put one foot in front of the other and made it to the top of kilimanjaro um as you can see from the uh physical pictures um but uh, in my mind that, dra that dragged her up there no i really i, I really love that you know because it is you know there, there is a point and i think jerome's put in there there is a point on killy when it okay it does kind of flatten out you know, you're at considerable altitude there, and sometimes you realise, yeah, it probably is easier to go on than, than turn back. But you know, the, the battle, um, you know, in the mind is 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 a big one. Um, you know, I'm I moving away from Kelly onto places like Everest Base Camp. You know, in the build up to to get into Everest Base Camp, there'll be a few days where you know you might be having headaches, you might maybe not feel hungry anymore because one of the uh, symptoms of altitude yeah. sickness is you know one of the early ones, and they're not really a serious one. But one that can really drain your energy is that you just don't feel hungry. I've never had it. Yeah, you're, you're so lucky. I've had it <laughs> like numerous <laughs> times. You've got to force your food down, and you know that's a battle. You know, some people aren't used to drinking four liters of water in a day. That can be a battle. Some people aren't, you know, uh, kind of used to um, altitude uh, because it's a newbie, and you know, not that breathing's any different, but you know, you certainly get you overexert yourself more. 
Yeah. Um, you know, and then you've got to think, okay, if, if I'm going to, okay, I've got to, I've got 600 meters we need to do today and it is a steep incline. You know, how can I break down that 600 meters if it doesn't feel like it's such a big challenge, you're not going to actually, we're going to really struggle. You know, can you break it down to small chunks? Can you maybe think, right, after every, uh, if I count to 30, I'll only stop for a break when I get to 30. You know, so you've got 30 steps, so slow and steady. Then we get to 30, you have a 30 second break, then you do another 30. What if you lose pain? <laughs> Start again. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, but do you break? Uh, I, if, I, if I lost count, I probably would have a break just to reset my fair, mind. Fair, fair. Because you reset the mind and, and then you think, okay, then you recalibrate almost and then you're yeah. on again. You know, and okay, you can have a sneaky few, you know, cheeky few breaks in between. But I guarantee you, if you if you kind of do that, it, it, you know, you'll be up the hill before you know it. Yeah. And one thing I was going to touch on, and, and actually at the corner of my eyes, he had us touched on it as well. Yeah, yeah. One of the biggest mindset chunks for these trips, because we, one of our big ethos, one of our big philosophies is that these trips are achievable by everyday people. You know, you don't have to be a super athlete. You yeah. don't have to be NIMS. You don't have to be the guy that's always at the front pushing everyone and never seems to have a problem. Yeah. They are achievable by regular folk who put in a bit of training, deploy a bit of mindset, and they get to the top. But one of the questions we get asked all the time, and I lost count of the amount of times I've answered it, is I'm worried I'll slow the group down. I'll worry I'll be the least fit out of everyone. I'll worry about everything. Yeah. Um, but you've got to remind yourself that you didn't go there to compete with people. Yeah. You didn't go there to prove that you're the strongest and best in the world. You went there to fulfill a personal ambition. Sometimes you go there... And you, you know, you you do things for charity and other important causes, yeah. but it's never about competing. So if you see people disappearing off into the distance, like Heather's mentioned, their lights, they're racing on ahead. Well, that's fine. Good for them. Let them go. They're yeah. on their journey. You're on yours. And it's not about keeping up. And I can tell you this, right? The amount of times I've been on trips where I've seen people fly off every day, every day, every day. Mm. And then if you get to base camp and they don't. Or yeah. you get to the summit and they don't. Yeah, it, we've seen that loads of times, haven't we? Like, well, yeah, people who just race off at the start. You know, honest to God, if yeah. I had to say, the amount of fast people versus the amount of slow people, I've seen more fast people quit and duck out and yeah. head back to the chopper than I've seen slow people. Um, and yes, it is tough, and you need some resilience to go that slow and to kind of chip away at the distance day by day. And it is a struggle, but you'll get far more out of it um, ultimately for having done that. And again, if we're going to deploy NIMS is my, my new favorite saying from NIMS, you know, when you think you're totally beep, you're only 45% beep, you know, so, um, and the Very word good. rhymes with duct. So, really? uh, yeah, it rhymes with duct, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, some good questions coming through as well. We will um, collate these and, and, and go back and, and answer them. Um, you know, but I just want to kind of talk about mindset a little bit more because Mindset, okay, is, is, is big, is part of it, is a lot of it's physical, isn't it? You know, about, okay, can my body go further? Can my body handle this? And also as well, there's the other stuff that we think about where that you've got to use your mind. And, and sometimes that's around fear. Um, you know, fear of failure can be a big one. Fear of heights, you know, anything that comes into it. And, you know, there's, there's people out there, um, I think, um, uh, what's his name? Ant Middleton is big around, oh, you can't even let fear enter you know I, I don't know if any of you read any of his books some of his some of his books are good he's, he's a bit um he's got a lot of ego for me so i don't generally sort of gravitate to those sort of people but some of his stuff makes sense actually um you know and around fear uh, he calls it around the um uh, the kind of bubble the fear bubble about bursting it as much as you can um and getting through it but sometimes you know we're human aren't we we have fears we're all human uh, at least i think dave is um you know and <laughs> i've been scared i've been scared before fear is good man. fear is yeah. um fear is i think is something that you should recognize and and, yeah. and invite because it keeps you it keeps you sensible you know if yeah, you yeah. like the amount of times whether i've been hiking biking or just driving whatever i'm doing if i see someone acting without fear yeah more often than not it borders on the reckless but i think inviting fear in managing it yeah and then using it to make like an assessed risk. You know what we always say? There's like um, manage risk, manage and risk, and unmanaged yeah. risk. I think if you know, if you have the fear, it's, yeah. it's healthy to factor in. But one good thing that is important, and a lesson I learned, um, what we learned fairly recently, and it's not strictly hiking related, but I'll bring it back round, was um, is like you know your perception of danger and 
how practice and mindset can actually change that perception. Yeah. So it's no longer something that you fear. Now, I used to be a fairly accomplished mountain bike rider. Then I broke my knee and various other things. And now things I used to do second nature yeah. frighten me again. So they, because uh, it's, it's always like this, isn't it? Sorry to butt in it, around. So say you're going down on your mountain bike and, you know, you, you, you do your thoughts go back to the injury sometimes? All the time. Do they? Yeah, yeah. Like, well, it's getting less and less, but this yeah. is what I'm having to relearn and overcome. Yeah. Obstacles um, that I used to go over <clears> and <throat> wouldn't think twice about. Yeah. Now cause me a great deal of fear and anxiety because all of a sudden I, I, ne I like I knew of the consequences before, yeah. but they weren't necessarily real because I hadn't experienced them. Yeah. However, one thing that I've started to do now, rather than recklessly going over things and hoping for the best, yeah. which is pretty much what I did before, was now I'm getting back into the art of practice. And this comes back to training. Yeah. And I think by training and building <clears> up <throat> gradually and not necessarily diving out of your comfort zone, but expanding that comfort yeah. zone, something you've talked about before, yeah. which is instead of sort of sort of just leaving your comfort zone and doing something that yeah. perhaps you're a little out of your depth with, expanding that comfort zone yeah. really helps and knowledge dispels fear. And if you are doing something like Kilimanjaro or you're doing something like Everest Base Camp, or whether you're just training for something comparatively smaller, getting out there and training and learning about the actual undertaking yeah. helps with the mindset. And a lot of the time when I'm hiking and I'm on a high peak or and I'm a little bit, maybe a little bit of anxiety might creep in. It's totally yeah. normal. I yeah, often, it's normal to I, rem it? yeah. I remind myself of what I've learned, what I've done, what I've achieved in training. And then you can just keep putting one foot in front of another. And again, I'll say it like, I love this. Like Tyson Fury used to annoy me a little bit, but now I'm a big fan. Okay. And when he says you can either um, quit or keep going, but they both hurt. Yeah. You know, and I love <laughs> There I we love go. That. The next time you face that on the mountain, that's a great one to sort of it, mentally it, say. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. And it's not about turning around when it's sensible to do so. That's yeah. not quitting. That's making a wise yeah, sensible and decision. sensible yeah, yeah. decision. Quitting is more about not going ahead when you can because you've given in to fear you know and when you get back that feeling of should i could i have that that's what the pain he's talking about is. yeah and um yeah i find it really interesting yeah i'm just reading some of the comments uh whilst you were whilst you were talking there because there's, there's a few coming off the back of it um just saw simon there simon harwood you're talking about managing risk with my kids who are scared something will happen to me during the trek to ebc showed them the walkthrough videos which dispelled their fears although they're disappointed andy won't be with us <laughs> I'll be with you in spirit, mate. Um, but no, it's not so just Andy. I know, sorry. It, it's the walkthrough videos. They're all me. What can I do, Dave? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, fine. but you can take Dave, Simon. <laughs> be my guest. Not honestly, yeah. It's, um, <laughs> no, it, they are really, they are really, really good videos. Yeah, I and, hope they're useful. And one that that's one of those things, Simon. But knowledge dispels fear. Yeah. It really does. You know when. I'll take it to the extreme that when you tell people um, I'm going to Everest Base Camp, the first thing they'll say is, oh, my God, it's littered with corpses. You could yeah. die. And it's because they don't have the knowledge of what Base Camp is yeah, compared exactly. to the mountain itself. And even then, there's a little bit of sensationalism. But again, yeah, well, as soon as you tell them what Base Camp is, what you're doing, who you're going with, yeah. it dispels the fear. And this is it, you know, and again, that's one of the challenges and a challenge of the mind. You know, you want your, your family to be OK with you going all these places. I know a lot of you on here have got kids and. Um, you know, other halves, maybe they're going with you, maybe they're not. Um, you know, it could be parents, you know, they're like, oh, what are you doing going there? I remember when I went first time, my dad was worried the entire time I was out there because, it, again, he didn't have that kind of, um, he, he wasn't kind of educated around what I was actually entailing. I mean, when you when you say Everest or when you say Kilimanjaro, uh, maybe I think because they don't really understand what it is, they, they immediately think danger or oh, be careful, you know, all this kind of thing. Because then they, they're coming from a place of almost, you know, and, and rightly so, they don't know about it. Maybe there's a little bit of fear there, obviously, because they care about you. Um, but it, it does right. If you, um, you know, if you could show them one or two things and show like these are the people we're going with, um, you know, that they know what they're doing. And, and also with, with, you know, the best people out there um, in terms of the knowledge from the guides, you know, yeah. they're managing, they're looking after you, they're making sure you're safe, um, you know, and the risk is managed, um, you know, and then they'll... <laughs> The most amazing thing is though when you come back and then when you've shown them that you can do it um i guarantee you they'll be uh chomping at the bit to want to come and, and like oh if, if, if my dad can do it or my brother can do it or my partner can do it or whatever they, they, they'll get the itch as well yeah um or at least the seed will be sown for when they're able to, to go and 
um, you know, you'd be surprised by how many people you'll inspire, um, you know, in your circle of friends and family, whatever people you know, just by doing these things, um, you know, and pretty, how positive that is. Pretty much all of my friends have gone to every space camp. Yeah. My dad's been twice. Yeah. And it is this like ever expanded circle of what you do because, and it is amazing. And then another thing as well is about, so my dad went because I went, so did a few of my friends. Yeah. I went because you went. Yeah, yeah. You went because you were inspired by other people that traveled in the Himalayas. And now your friends and our friends have gone. And you do end up with this crazy network of people that have all done Everest Base Camp or Kilimanjaro yeah. and stuff like that. I saw one thing Ramona said then about, yeah, um, yeah. you know, she was saying that did she's hey, um and ah in about whether or not to go, not um and ah in, it's deciding. Um, I know you've got a very, you know, almost specific set of challenges that you're dealing with. Um, you've been open about your um, your health and your heart and things like that. And honestly, Mono, I think it's one of those where you don't know if you can do it or not until you actually try. Yeah. But um, going back to what I was saying about before is manage and unmanaged risk. If you doctors and your insurance and everyone else says it's safe for you to go, you know you've already done base camp. You did base camp with the same heart that you've got now. Um, yeah. And so I have a more knowledgeable brain. I believe it is achievable <laughs> for you. But also, and this is something that for people that perhaps thinking about booking a trip but haven't yet decided because they're worried, there's no harm in trying. You know, it's, yeah. it, you don't fail by attempting something and not achieving it. You fail by not trying. Yeah. And that's one of the bit. And also, you know, it's round one you know, of, of, of a journey. My father came to Everest Base Camp with me and we always say, I always say he's been 1.8 times to base camp. Because well, 1.98, he was so close, 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 yeah. But, but like my father came with me on the first time uh, back in 2017 Yeah. Um, and didn't quite make it. We left Lobouche on our way to Everest Base Camp yeah. and he realized that it was not, it's not going to be possible. You know, the, he wasn't feeling it, it was too slow. So he turned around, went back to Lobouche um, and then we caught back up with him at the end of the day and he went home and he was a little bit dejected. He gave away a lot of his hiking equipment. Yeah, he was he I kind mean, of lost. He was like, well, frustrated. after right? that, he said he hung up his hiking boots. Yeah. I think we weren't back very long before he decided we had to go back. Yeah, yeah. And he put a few different things in place and went back and then made base camp with remarkable ease compared to the first one. Yeah. And, you know, all the way up, all the way down, you know, and he did it. And... I think if you speak to him, he would not say that his first attempt was a failure. Yeah. You know, he, it was a first attempt in learning, not fail. <laughs> you know, so. I'm trying to find, um, there's an episode I think would be really valuable. Um, if anyone's into their podcast, um, was basically a, um, because your dad did come onto a podcast, one of our early ones, actually. I forget about that. Uh, about, it's called The 5% That Don't Make It. I'm just trying to dig out the link. Um, and then I'll, I'll add it to the comments because I think if any of you, you know, out walking, out running, um, you know, you're in the gym, uh, maybe you're driving to work, you know, all those times where you can think, okay, well, I'll stick the radio on or maybe I'll, uh, you know, I'll put, I don't know, if you if you like Queen and you like a bit of uh, Freddie Mercury, then you can put that on. But if you like to hear our voices, yeah. um, then you can uh, go to the Mountain Malarkey podcast and there's some good episodes on there, especially, you know, it's good. I, I thought that was a really good one. I, I think that was our third or fourth episode. And it was really, and it was titled uh, the five percent that don't make it. Yeah, and you know because we've got a ninety-five percent success rate on our trip there or thereabouts, um, a bit over at the moment. And you know about the five percent that don't make it and the learns and lessons we can get from that. Um, you know because most of the time it's, um, you know there are some simple things you can change. Um, okay, I know we're, we're on a while well, we're talking about mindset here. Most of the people who turn around it doesn't say they had bad mindsets. That wasn't, the, you know, like, for instance, just talking about your dad again, that wasn't necessarily his problem. I think he admitted that he could have done more training before he went. Yeah. Um, you know, I think he, he maybe could have looked after his body a, a bit better. You know, there's certain things that he would change. And then he went back a couple of years later and he nailed it. Yeah. And enjoyed it and had an amazing time. Um, and I think just from those learns and lessons, you know, I think you'll, um, you know, if you can, as, as, as Dave always says, it's a nice little... Uh, your one of your lines was it glean a golden nugget from from that then yeah and it, and it makes that one percent makes a difference it makes a difference yeah um which is is awesome yeah and um interesting <laughs> thing here that yeah yeah um, i've just spotted was it joel palmer <laughs> love jerome i want to break free yeah <laughs> um so they turn back on that with the, the valet blanche would you say route um uh, on a snowboard the restaurant skis didn't, yeah, yeah. didn't feel right 
eight hours later met yeah so he turned back met his friends at the bottom Oof. and they met some people who were snowboarding like he was and it didn't turn out right he had no experience and so he made the right decision yeah, yeah. that's not quitting the valley blanche route that is yeah. making an a, a, a decision to you know keep yourself safe also it caught my eye because i'm learning to snowboard yeah. Um, I say learning to snowboard. You got uh, lessons on Friday. Uh, right? Yeah, my first all day <laughs> lesson is on Friday. Um, so any tips, Joel, that you would like to um, impart, do email me. Um, I guarantee you, you'll say if you're boarded, get used to sitting on your butt. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it was I, I, honestly we had this plan for a long time, and I was going to learn to ski. Yeah. Um, but my surgeon has now said that that's um, you're not allowed. With, no. Uh, uh, most skiers and your friend says that as well yeah they also yeah <laughs> like, the acl just simply won't allow it but snowboarding is um seems seems more uh you dave you'll love it if you're flying down there yeah i know um, yeah i know screaming <laughs> out of control i'll um <laughs> I'll, I'll get some videos of dave and i'll i'll i'll, I'll show everyone oh, that you can have, you yeah. have a really nice send, look send them that. to dave remington so he can uh, do his magic with them as i'm like <laughs> as i'm pinwheeling down uh, the mountain here we go he's got some some messages there but right yeah so you know, I know we've talked about, okay, so we talked about the, the basics of, of, of the mindset there. Uh, we've also talked about, um, you know, some fear stuff. Um, also as well, a biggie, and, I, and I've, you know, because over the last couple of weeks, we've had, um, I say a couple of weeks, several days, um, we've been doing the £10 deposits again. Uh, we've done it back, God, feels like a long time ago now, um, uh, during the first lockdown. Remember those days? Um, and we did some, uh, you know, talking about planning for when we can. And now, we're, as we, if you're on the live last week, we were like planning and now we can, um, and which is why we launched the, the £10 deposits again. There's only a couple more days, so I want to remind everyone, if you are interested in booking a trip, um, you know, it is £10 deposit if you're, if you're choosing a monthly payment plan, which, um, you know, lots of our customers, never trackers do. But the, the point I mentioned that is that there's sometimes there's reasons that people have that they don't want to go because of things like fear or the unknown. And I think it's it's interesting. It's good to talk about these things mm -hmm. because, you know, again, we go back to the educational piece around, OK, when people say Everest or Kilimanjaro or something like that, immediately it's danger. It's not for me. And there is something about these trips. You know, you have to. There's no there's no point in half arsing it. You know, you may if, if you if you want to go and it means so much to you, that counts for so much more on a trip, doesn't it? 100%. You know, because because it means so much to you. It gives you that extra motivation on a trip when you're having a tough time, you know, whether you're raising money for charity, whether you're doing it just, you know, for yourself, you know, with maybe it's been on your bucket list for a few years. Maybe, you know, you've got a group of friends, you are like, oh, I've always wanted to go there. You know, it really makes a difference. So yeah. before you do that, and then, you know, we're talking about booking on here for 10 quid at the moment. But, you know, before you're doing that, it's got to feel right. <clears throat> and I think if there's any, I mean, anyone on the live today, who, you know, I know a lot of regulars are on here. But if there's anyone that's sitting on a fence, drop in, drop in some comments or messages around, you know, if if there's something that, that's stopping you or maybe there's there's something there that's like, you know, is it is it right for me? Because it's not for everyone, you know, and, and we get people who, who sometimes, um, you know, email us and they're talking about it. And, we're you know, adventure travel is certainly not for everyone. You know, um, you know, there's there's a lot of things that can happen, you know, bumpy roads, headaches, um, you know travel sickness there's lots of things you mm -hmm. miss home but it's one of those things if it is for you and um you know these trips and pushing and, and challenging yourself uh, you talked about comfort zone earlier expanding your comfort zone then if it is for you you're in the right place um yeah. which is why we created that 10 pound and yeah i just wanted to throw that in there if we're talking about um uh, you know we've got a few more days to, to take advantage of that so definitely drop some messages if there's anything that's kind of if you're sitting on the fence about anything yeah um but dave i reckon we should we should answer some of these questions because we're we're, we're can't believe we're half hour in already why not let's uh, um let's try and get through them flies by we're chatting doesn't it we have um, to go right to the back they're not they're not being spoon fed to us now this is good though this is good there is one that i did uh someone did ask um uh, bear with us today because <laughs> we uh i say usually we've got them kind of mm. lined up um i say everyone is is a bit busy today um here we go um I'll, let's answer this one andrew scott hey andrew how's it going um I uh, missed last couple of sessions. So here goes. How normal is normal for trekking back in Nepal? Apologies. There's a hundredth time it's been asked. Um, how soon you accept an EBC bookings this year? Dad. Thank you. And, and, um, <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm hogging the, no. the mic. No, uh, for a second there, I thought you were going to answer. I was like, no, brilliant. Okay, <laughs> sweet. Uh, yeah, Andrew, welcome back to the lives. Um, yeah, so 
don't worry about the hundred times being asked because if you get asked a hundred questions, that's a hundred people that didn't know the answer before. Exactly. So I'm more than happy yeah. to go through it. Anyway, so what what how normal is normal for trekking in the pole now? So trekking in the pole is actually the same as it's ever been. Yeah. So the what's different now is just the, the hoops that we have to kind of jump through <clears> that weren't there so we can travel. But again, about the mindset thing, and I mentioned at the beginning that we've had to come over some different challenges that we weren't expecting. This is one of them. And honestly, I've traveled recently um, and, you know, it's an extra half hour of yeah. prep to fill out some um, passenger locator forms and to download your vaccination. Yeah. Um, I'll cover off some of the highlights for you. So in order to travel to Nepal, you have to be fully vaccinated. That's two jabs. They're not asking for the third as of yet. Yeah. Um, you need to have a passenger locator form <clears throat> and you need to have had a negative PCR test that shows you are fit to fly within 72 hours of your arrival. Um, so all of that stuff can be arranged in a day. Yeah. Um, myself and Andy, we've done it. When you actually uh, land in the pool and you get picked up from the airport, it's business as usual. Yeah. We'll yeah. take care of you in terms of like you know hand sanitizer and stuff like that, and there will be um, some extra little precautions in place. But when you're on the mountain, the flight to Lukla, the lodges, the trekking, the scenery, Everest is still there. It's pretty much the same as it's ever been. Then when you come back down from the mountain. You have to have a PCR to get back into Kathmandu International mm -hmm. Airport, Tribuvan International Airport. Um, our team are organizing that. It does cost about $20, so have that spare, but we do all the organizing and all the logistics for you. Essentially, you'll have a quick test, and then later that evening or the following morning, depending on your flight, you'll, yeah. get, a, you'll get a pass. That's done at the hotel as well, that's isn't it? So hotel, it's, a lot, yeah. it's, it's nice and easy from so, a process point of view. So, yeah, hopefully <clears> that's <throat> kind of enlightened you a little bit. Like I said, nothing is too drastic. It's yeah. just about traveling. Um, and it's the logistics of traveling that have changed really, not actual yeah. the the business, you know, it's business as usual for us uh, over in the port. And the um, the only thing for me to tag on there, because yeah, it's a good question, you know, um, and is around, you know, how soon are you accepting bookings? I mean, we have to be honest that we've, we've never stopped taking bookings ever since COVID because people have wanted to book so far in advance. Yeah. And I think even um, like, you know, because we, we've reduced our deposits, you know, naturally we always get uh, people who are okay, let's, let's just book in, you know, they want to take up that, that offer. Um, you know, we had several people book on the base camp yesterday, for instance. So um, some of them to Gokyo Valley as well, which is cool. We had nice people on we've Gokyo. Had a, we've had a couple book um, on for this spring. They're going in April. Yeah, they are. Well, we actually got our first Nepal trip in two weeks, haven't we? Um, Don't not say that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, we, we do. have. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, no, I I cannot stress how happy I am in order to get people out there. Yeah, it's been great it's to get people over to Killy um, and seeing the summits come in. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. But in Nepal as well, we had so many people that had to reschedule far greater numbers than we did Kilimanjaro. Yeah. Um, so to see those people who have been stuck with us, remain dedicated to their goal of getting to Everest Base Camp and exploring the Himalaya, um, to see those guys finally board the planes and get out there and experience what it is that they've been waiting for, that means more to me than anything else in the world. I cannot wait yeah. for people to get out there and experience it because it changed my life. I worked for a bank the first time I went there. You know, and now my whole life is about this. And I know a lot of people message me and um, have said that Nepal is, and the experience of trekking in Nepal has changed their life. A lot of yeah. people work a lot of stuff out that's been hanging in their mind for a long time. And they generally you leave Nepal with a better better mindset and, and, and I dare I say a better mm -hmm. mental health because you have that time away from cars, TVs, yeah. demands of life. You literally have two jobs to do. You need to wake up in the morning and you need to trek from point A to point B. And drink four litres a day. Okay. <laughs> there is, I'll admit, there is, there, there is a few other jobs to do as well. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. essentially, <laughs> you've got to drink, you've got to walk from point A to point B. There we go. Right, all right. In the, in the sub menu, there's a few other ways. But uh, I know. you know me, I, don't, I, I, every, I want everyone hydrated. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, the uh, the experience of going there is amazing. So I can't yeah. wait. And uh, mate, if you want to book on now, uh, book on now. Yeah, yeah. We'd love to have you, definitely. Um, now's the time. It's actually, um, I, I'm just scrolling through here. We've got Graham. Uh, Graham Drew booked in for EBC on April the 6th. So, yeah, he's due to go. Um, although, reading, yeah, damage my back in a fall, bouldering. Oh, mate, hope you're okay. I was, I was doing some bouldering last night with um, Ellie, our little one. Um, so, yeah, still not 100% after four months. Um, so, I'm just, just reading through here. So, yeah, I know you're with work and things, little pain. Um, Tall whether to postpone it or suck it up and go for it. Yeah, you know. It's, 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 a, it's a very good one. I mean, ultimately, mate, it, it, it does come down to, to how you're truly feeling. Um, you know, I mean, just to, to kind of 
to put it out there. We, we've had people with, with injuries, you know, knee injuries, mm. people who are carrying injuries um, at the time, and, and they've been on trips. And you know, I think I think one thing, if you do choose to go, is, is just be prepared that it'll be, more, it'll be harder than normal, especially with your back, because you'll be carrying a bag on your back, uh, although not too heavy, because your, your porter will be, a, will be able to, to help. Um, so just, you know, it might be worth testing that out a bit just in the time being. Um, you know, I don't know what the, the injury is. It might be worth having a second opinion, maybe chatting to physiotherapist or, or you know, someone about your back. Um, you know, if you've injured it, you probably have, and just get their advice and say, look, this is what I'm going to be doing. You know, are the cards on the table? What do you think? Um, and then you can make your best decision for you. I mean, you know, I know there's, they guarantee you there's people out there who would risk it and do it and they'd love it, but they probably suffer along the way. There's other people that think, no, no, you know what I'm going to do? I want to be in the, my body in the best place possible. Yeah. I'll move it to the autumn. And if you want to do that, no worries, mate. Just let us know. There's no drama at all. We, you know, we, I think because the last two years were COVID, you know, we've, we've been essentially in the business of rescheduling people. So, mate, if you want to do that, we're all really flexible. Um, obviously, if you want to do it, we'd love to have you because April is, is so close. And I know what it means for, to you. But just let us know, mate. And um, one way or the other, there's no wrong here. Whatever you want to do, just let us know and, and, we'll, and we'll plan ahead. And, yeah. and you know what? If you do reschedule to like October, for instance, it's not that far away. You know, we think, um, you know, in 22, only feels like yesterday, we're in 2019. So let's so, hope, uh, I mean, I'd like to think, you know, the next year we do slightly more things than we have done the last two years. Yeah. But yeah, you just let us know, mate. And uh, yeah, we'd love to have you. Awesome. Uh, right. Let's scroll down. Uh, we've got a few more cues coming in. Um, yeah. Guys, obviously, I know we're scrolling through questions here. Bear with us this week. Um, you do have any questions, though, drop them in the comments. We're just scouring through just to, um, you know, kind of pick these up. We want to make sure that you get your questions answered. Sorry, Dave. I know uh, That's I'm, fine, I'm, I'm scrolling through here. Uh, oh, we've got you. We're doing beginning of March. Um, sorry, guys. We're just literally scrolling through these uh, some of your comments just to see what sort of questions. Um, I actually quite... Um, something from Andy Whale, actually, while he has mentioned um, uh, something, uh, hypnotherapy around fear or anxiety. And, uh, you know, I do I do have a good friend who's a hypnotherapist. And, you know, I have to have to be honest, not for everyone. But, yeah, it's certainly worth a shout. I know he's changed thousands of people's lives through trauma, anxiety, depression, that kind of stuff. And I know there's not a quick fix to all of this. But it's um, and Andy Whale was was, was definitely recommending hypnotherapy there. Um <laughs> just reading some of some of the comments andy mcnaughton jones hey andy how you doing i think my wife is scared of tents and long drop toilets i'm not surprised mate i'm not yeah. surprised as, as long as the tents aren't too close to the long drops i'm all right with that one to be fair <laughs> um, um but yeah you don't want to fall in the night yeah. um yeah another really good one there from uh, debbie bothroyd that says about yeah. when she was running um a half marathon recently Gosh. and wanted to quit she repeated the mantra don't be uh, S-H-I-T? Yeah, don't be beep to myself. Um, it took her mind off the pain and got um, an awesome TV, whatever works for you. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. And I see a lot of people talking about music and things like that. Actually, that's another really good point about um, keeping your mindset in that positive place that keeps you going forward. Um, mantras are great. Mantras are yeah. really great. And it does really, really help. Another one is, um, you know, people are mentioning songs there. I download usually about 50 hours of podcasts and shows and stuff and a mixture of all different stuff um, just to keep me in my happy place. Yeah. Um, and yeah, love the mantras and stuff like that as well. I don't really know if I have a specific mantra. I kind of pick them up as I'm traveling. Sometimes it's just like a song I'll hear or something like that. Yeah. And you do tend to repeat these things to, to yourself. Um, yeah. Is Sorry, that... I'm just reading some of these. Yeah, I, um, is a couple of, actually got a couple of questions now. Um, just just scrolling through. Uh, Lindsay McLeod, Lindsay, welcome. Um, can we talk about heights on the EBC track? Yeah, of course. Um, looked up trying to mentally prepare for the bridges. Uh, are there any other basically parts that we need to be aware of? So, yeah, on Everest Base Camp, there's not, I would say, a lot of like precipices. You know, you know there's like big drop offs. Obviously, you've got your bridges, and one of them is significantly high, Hillary Bridge. Um, you know, and we have had people, I've been with people um, that have really struggled with you know, beforehand thinking, oh my God, how am I going to do this? But we've coached them through it. The guides are brilliant. You know, they've, they've done this hundreds of times and they'll, they'll get you across. Um, apart from that, there's, there's only, there's a couple of paths where if you stay on the inside, you know, there are a, a drop. Um, I think on day five or day six, when you're hiking towards Tengboche Monastery, um, 
you know you're hiking on the the Tengboche Trail, um, and you know there's a little bit of a drop off there, but it's you know it's very safe. Yeah. Um, if anything, they've worked hard to kind of mitigate that by putting in certain things. Um, they haven't put handrails there yet, thank you, thankfully, because you know it's nice to have a little bit of uh, adventure. But um, you know we it, it's it's fully safe there. So yeah, there's not other than that, there's not too many other things that. Um, you know, could be classed as, as kind of drop offs, yeah. if you like. Um, if you do go up Kalapatar, um, because if you're on an Everest Base, uh, Everest Base Camp trek, and if you get up early in the morning, then Kalapatar is an option. When you get to the top of Kalapatar, there is quite a big drop off the other just, side. Just don't go too but, close yeah. to the top, though. You know, <laughs> it's safe. It's, it's probably yeah. safe, yeah. yeah. Um, a couple of uh, really interesting ones here. Um, one of them is from Kevin Beavis. Kevin, how are you doing? He was at me yesterday. Oh, do you? Nice. Kev's, Kev's, uh, um, his biggest fear is struggling for breath after 4,000 meters. So, yeah. yeah, again, this is going back to one of those things where I talked about knowledge dispels fear. Um, you yeah. know, you can visit the altitude center and actually learn a little bit about um, how altitude affects the body and why you're breathing heavily. Yeah. But one thing I would say is it's not in my experience that I wouldn't have used the word struggling for breath. Yeah. It's not any harder to breathe at altitude <clears throat> than it is at sea level. It feels the same. The feeling is more like if you've ever been for a jog or a run or even a sprint and you get to that point where you have to catch your breath and yeah, you're just yeah. breathing heavily. Yeah, That's what it's like. It's more like your body's demanding more oxygen. So you just have to breathe more and it takes a little bit longer to get to that point where you can and feel normal, you know, but it never really feels like you're struggling for breath. It's not an asthma attack. Um, it's yeah, more it's just, it's more of just, you know, it takes a little bit longer for your body to sort of draw in the oxygen it needs. So you take more and more breaths, Yeah. but I've been, um, you know, the highest I've ever been is probably the summit of Kilimanjaro, nearly 6,000 meters. Um, and sat at that point, I could sit and have a conversation like this with you. You know, once I get to the top and you sat and relax, I'd be like this, it's fine. Yeah. If I jumped up and tried to do like two burpees, then yeah, I'd be and then you know after a couple of seconds you'd like catch your breath yeah but yeah it's not normally that bad and there is a few things you can do so one of them is if you are noticing that it's a struggle to breathe or if you mm -hmm. wake up in the night and you feel like you might be gasping um diamox is um something yeah. of a miracle cure for that type of thing and it really does take away the um the stress of that so yeah definitely kev's also put um uh because he, he mentions he has asthma as well and and around and I remember uh, we talked about this, Kev, because I met Kev um, on a little hiking weekend um, just in a, in a random pub, sat next to each other. And uh, now he's never an trekker. <laughs> uh, but Kev, um, yeah, I hope life's all right, mate. Um, but yeah, you talk about breathing, a high altitude, and, and maybe things you can do before. I think Dave mentioned the altitude center there, which is really, you know, we do recommend that if you have time. I know it's in London and is, um, is kind of a bit out of the way. But if you can get down there, they're great. They're very knowledgeable. But just from our point of view, I mean, I've got, um, you know, Mild severe asthma, you know, I've had it since I was a kid. I've I've had issues. I I, I take pump every day. Um, I take steroids every day because of my lungs, and I use an asthma pump if I'm struggling. Or you were looking a bit like that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's the extra turkey on Christmas. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so from from an asthmatics point of view, just to let you know that actually scientifically, asthmatics do really well at altitude because of the I don't know because of the restricted breathing already that you suffer. Um, you already know and your body already knows it from a oxygen deprived environment because it's like that at sea level at times. Mm. So when you're breathing, you will breathe the same. Like Dave said, if you're overexerting yourself, you'll be breathing more. And Kev, I know you're, you're a super fit guy. You know, you've done like 10 peaks um, in North Wales in what's one he, go. What's he worrying about then? <laughs> um, exactly, exactly. So when, you breathe, when you're over 4,000 meters, it won't feel any different like that. It won't be like you're trying to breathe like suck it through a straw it doesn't feel like that breathe the same if you try running up the stairs or maybe you know at five thousand meters you'll try and tie your shoelaces you'll think oh wow you might get a bit lightheaded that's how it kind of lets you know you haven't got yeah. enough oxygen in your body um but from from me to you you will you will do great just with the asthma a few things just make sure you have your medication with you maybe because there's quite a lot of dust out there and i know dust can be a trigger for a lot of asthmatics um you, know, you can try some antihistamines just to take that edge off um, I know I've used that and it's helped. Um, you know, even if it helps five percent, it helps, right? So yeah, yeah, but you'll be uh, you'll do great, mate. Interesting. Uh, Josh yeah. Ball, uh, Josh Bell, sorry. Um, hey, Josh. Going to EBC October twenty three with your son Charlie to celebrate your sixtieth. Awesome. Can't think of a better place to do it. Mm. Um, my dad actually celebrated his 
well, actually, no, he was 60 in the middle. I think he was 59 when he failed. And almost, 61 when, and he, achieved 61 when he achieved yeah. it. Which tells me that age is just a number, right? <clears throat> you don't necessarily get, um, you know, slower and more and fit as you get older. In fact, I trekked to base camp with a 75-year-old and he was uh, one of the most relaxed characters I've ever met. Yeah. Found it much easier than a lot of the younger folk. Yeah, just great he guy. Did, he didn't have that stress. I think he was um, out there enjoying himself. The wise old owl is, uh, you know, that knowledge. Um, he knew, you know, like you said earlier, I know we said this a few times, knowledge dispels fear. But when you have the knowledge and you and you understand your body, you, you realize, you know, on these trips, you're just walking. Yeah. You know, it is altitude, it is hard, it is dangerous. But there's a few things you can do that, that will stop that from happening. You can be unlucky, anyone can, you know, you can, you can be unlucky at sea level, right? Mm. Walking across the road. Yeah. Um, you can ride your bike on a trail you've ridden a million times and all of a sudden your <laughs> nail will just explode. Exactly, Dave, exactly. It can happen any time. Jerome's asking, can we have a tune in about Patagonia Ice Field? Seriously tempted to do this, but need more info. Yeah. Uh, definitely Jerome, great idea. Um, I know we've got a few big ones coming up, but um drop us a call, Jerome. Um, yeah, it'd be good to chat to you. We can we can try and because I know there's a lot of info when it comes to Patagonia. A bit different to what we normally do because um it's quite self-sufficient. There's a part of the trip where you're essentially carrying all your gear. Mm. Um, you know, we've got some trips in the pipeline actually we've been, we've been planning the last few weeks that are similar, you know. Yeah. Um yeah, there's some just you know a bit of a teaser. Um and it's nothing yet already. <laughs> I know, you know, <laughs> no, um, the Pyrenees, we've got some cool trips that we're looking to yeah. potentially do there. And some of them actually are, are self. Um, you've got to, to carry your own gear yeah. um, guided, but um, just because we don't have any guides or porters. Uh, sorry, porters. Uh, it's, it's, it's that kind of thing. So, yeah, just to um, and similar with Patagonia, there's parts of it. You do have mules and donkeys and, and porters that we can use to carry some of the gear. Um, wow. You know, we do have part as part of a team. Um, but yeah, there's quite a there's a there's a four day period on Patagonia ice fields where you know you've got to support your own um, your own weight with that. Yeah, um, if that makes sense. But yeah, so Jerome, drop us a message, mate. It'd be great to chat to you about it. Yeah, um, awesome, nice. Uh, just going through, let's have a little um, going down. So I'm just going through. I just what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Love it. These are all song names. I mean, <laughs> I, I think I honestly think they are listing song names. I think we've missed it because normally we're not really looking for the questions. I just saw something from Emily there where she mentioned I've missed the conversation, but she says happy to talk through the injury with you. I wonder if yeah. Emily, uh, can you let us know what are you a physiotherapist, a hypnotherapist? Yeah. Or shall I ask you, are you a therapist? Um, because no, I'm always interested in um uh, in people that sort of help people get over injuries and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be honest, it never it was never something I actually cared about. Um, but then when my knee burst, I thought to myself, this is really interesting because I know the value of it now. Yeah. And actually just uh, in helping the mindset. So yeah, I'd be interested in what you do. Speak up. Yeah, um, definitely. Sorry if you're repeating yourself. I love this, uh, Ramona, those feckin' yaks. Uh, I, I can't do an Irish accent, Ramona, you know me. Chasing you across the bridges. <laughs> well, at least, you get, at least you get you across, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, this one's quite good. By, uh, Byrony, uh, for Annapurna Base Camp, what is the average distance we walk per day? Uh, it's easier to prepare for. I find it easier to prepare for distances. All the information I've seen uses time. Yeah, it's a good question, Byrony. I think the Byrony. Mi- <sighs> Sorry, Byrony. I am... Sorry, but I always get pulled up. I, don't... I, mean, <laughs> I actually know another Byrony. Bryony. I actually know another Byrony. Right? Yeah. And if you say Byrony, Oh, okay. You'll get Sorry, a, you'll, get a, you'll get a slap. That's a beer fight. Because yeah. I think most Bryonies go through that all their life. But you owe her a pint now, okay. and I, I could do it. A glass of wine. Whatever, yeah, whatever that is right. Yeah, Bryony, let me know if Bryony <laughs> is actually a slappable offence. Because <laughs> I know someone else called Bryony, and it is definitely a slappable um, offence. But yeah, so th- th- there's a big reason for the, the, the time over distance thing. It's because um, a high altitude, okay, on some trips is good, if it, especially if it's flat. It's good to know the distance. Because in your mind then, you know, you think, oh, well, I can walk that distance. Um, you know, quite uh, this amount of time, you know, if it's like, you know, you've got three or four miles uh, or kilometers and you know that you walk that in a certain amount of time, you've got that in your mind. Whereas because it's an altitude and because you have a lot of stops, a lot of a lot of companies out there and that's uh, we, we like to use time um, just because it's, you know, be prepared to, to walk um, considerable time. That being said, though, um, you know, because there's, there's a few different days, if you want to drop us an email info at evertrek.co.uk, we can we can we can show you the distances um but yeah with with time is probably the one you want to focus on um just because it okay you know if you walk in for say six to eight hours in the day you can kind of prepare for that your guide does kind of um, like especially on annapurna um you know you have a brief in and each morning you'll say okay this is the plan for the day this is um the time it'll take you until we stop for a break or for lunch 
and then you've got the afternoon and then they'll probably do the same at lunch so you know then kind of what your day looks like yeah it's good to mentally prepare but before you go on the trip just be prepared that you will have long days pretty much every day mm. um, unless you're on acclimatization days where you you know you, you kind of have easier days they're not rest days we like to get out you know exercise the body exercise the lungs better for acclimatization um but i hope that kind of does justice if you want to email though definitely um have i, I just can... read that karen got smacked in the eye with a doll and tore a retina because yes. karen it's not enough to smash your eye socket on ben nevis you think to yourself i'll do the other one <laughs> or even worse is it the same one yeah um yeah she treats horses and people like emily does that's <laughs> um... sorry i'm just reading some of these uh off topic uh graham do you think darth vader was a good father wow um that's... i suppose we are talking about using the force yeah and i uh, i just saw another one from mona saying does anyone know how tall my dad is um yeah he's, he's been known he's been pretty tall uh six four he's i think he's six four he is tall. six four six five i don't know <laughs> um jamie browner said hi dave andy bit off yeah. topic sorry but how cold is summit night and killy <laughs> and what would you recommend for layers um so it depends what time of year you go when we were there it was about minus 15. Um, cold, but yeah. it can be wind chill, you know yeah and, and it was very windy so so that's why but it actually can be anything between sort of zero to that really is what you can expect yeah you're definitely going to need a lot of layers and you're going to need to prepare for cold cold weather yeah um to give you an example of what i wore i had a pair of like winter lined insulated trousers um some warmer socks i had a base layer on then i had a fleece um then i had a down jacket i also had a wind stopper as well yeah um uh, like a gore-tex wind stopper I had two pairs of gloves, I had a beanie, I had two buffs. Um wow. and you yeah. had a lot of layers, didn't you? That night he's um and actually uh, Jamie, you're going in February next year, aren't you? Um so at the same time I've been the uh, top of Killy. Uh same time, February uh, 2020, um, uh, before all the madness happened. And yeah, it was it, it's damn cold. Uh like essentially, um I rarely hike in my down jacket or, or move my it's just too warm. Mm. But there's sometimes where you have to and yeah I, I it's the first time actually i had my down jacket and my waterproof was over the top yeah and that was on top of a jumper with a base two base layers underneath it's it feels strange because you're in africa and africa is notorious for being a warm country mm. but yeah on the top of Kili, it, it you feel like you're in antarctica you know at times it's, especially in, in february you know you can get um low visibility uh, you can get wind so be prepared for that it's the wind that that really kind of takes it out of you because it's in. constant for eight nine hours it's you know? tight. well i've heard that someone someone recently was really still oh emily uh just replied to tell me know what she is an advanced remedial wow. therapy and equine manip therapist manipulation therapist specialized in injury rehab um interesting I, I never thought that someone would deal with both humans and horses I imagine horses are a lot so different. I imagine horses are easier to deal with because they don't really have opinions of their own on what's best for them. They just kind of do what you make. Them. <clears throat> um, I love horses, but I'm too terrified to ride one. They don't have brakes, really, do they? I'm just reading. Um, I, I'm going to take this one because, as you know, uh, coffee is is kind of a subject I like. Yeah. Uh, important question of coffee ever been asked? Yes, it has, Simon. Um, can you get decent coffee on EBC? Definitely affects my mindset, hundred um, percent. A bit of a uh, a kind of uh, sneaky one actually is that about an hour and a half outside of Lukla, there's a little village called Shep Lung, C H E P L U N G, I think. And um, the, one of my favorite um, coffee places is there. So I always stop there for a coffee. Uh, day one's always a short day anyway. So I highly recommend you stop there. That's probably one of the best coffees you'll have. Um, yeah, you'll get good coffee all the way up. I'd say in some of the lodges, as you get higher, they're limited. So, you know, they might have. Um, you know sachet coffee or you know uh, pretty much instant coffee um but when you're in namche when you're in um so namche bazaar where you'll be for two nights when you'll be in dingboche where you're there for two nights both of those places especially namche have really good coffee and there's loads of places to get it hmm. um yeah highly recommend it you you won't go far with with coffee obviously if you want to try your own stuff and bring your own kind of stuff for um you know we can get that heated if you need it it's, uh yeah there's some good coffee in the area you won't you won't go far wrong awesome karen has also asked what are about once you've su summoned summited i'm gonna go with uh and want to remove layers is a bottom base layer yeah. um too unbearable coming back down for that long work honestly i never wear them um so it all depends on how um hot or cold you run 
Mm. I'll be honest with you, there's always ways and means to get around it. If you put them on for the way up and then you realize you're starting to seriously bake and get uncomfortable on the day, you just find a rock. You know, yeah. people practically get undressed when they go to the toilet anyway behind a rock. It will happen that you will need to have a wee on when you're up or down Killy. You can just whip them off real quick and put them back on. I've done that. Um, you know, no shame on the mountains. You've got to make sure you're happy and comfortable. So bring yeah. them if you want. Um, personally, I just found out a set of winter trousers was enough for me. But they were re they were quite uh, va rab vaporized winter trousers, I think. So they're a shell on the outside, so they're windproof, wind aligned on the inside. They're really good. They're quite expensive, but I recommend them. Nice. Yeah, no, they're there. Sometimes we yeah, you, on the on the way down, you want to kind of you be shedding layers. You're like, I'm too hot. I know definitely on the way down, it was um, a few people were like that, weren't they? Yeah. And kind of like, right, I need a derobe. I'm also <laughs> shedding and adding layers all the time. Yeah. On the way up to Killy, there were times when I was just walking in my fleece. Then I'd stop for two seconds and I'd mm. be like, oh my God, I'm going to freeze to death. So I put on yeah. my jacket. Then I'd be in my windstop and then my down and both. So I constantly switch and change it up just to make sure mm. I stay comfortable. Um, yeah. Um, Richard, quote for Yeah, I was just. How long does it take to descend from EBC? Love that. Um, three yeah, days. Yeah, three days, and and uh, I I always enjoy the return. It's it's just so nice when you start to descend. You've got those three days, and you can just feel the oxygen uh, levels go up. You can almost like taste the oxygen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for on on our uh, classic Everest base camp route, we take three days to get back. Um, it really is a um, a nice journey back. <laughs> actually, I've I've actually done it in. I think 11 minutes. <laughs> you have done it. You've done it a lot quicker, haven't you? Yeah. You enjoy yeah. the 11 minutes. The 11 minute way down is much better. Um, well, no, it's not actually. I'm not going to say that, mm. but it is fun. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I love it. Yeah, he's a madman. I will, <laughs> I will say that I've done EBC a few times and I've done it mm. up and down, up and down, up and down. But uh, yeah. I, I, I have been known to treat myself to a little chopper. You are, well, <laughs> it's, it's okay every now and again. Join Chopper Club on the way down. Next yeah. time we can, we can do the whole thing. But it's all good. Um, right. Well, look, we, we're coming towards the end now. It's been a um, I hope today's been useful. I know when, when we talk about mindset and um, it kind of it's funny because when we look at kind of numbers and things like that and people are interested, we always get the highest ones. And we talk about equipment and boots and this and that, you know, which is honestly, well, we, which we know is really important. And we always ask those questions. But rarely do we get asked about mindset. Um, you know, so, but it's good to talk about it, isn't it? Yeah. You know, all these things. It's good to. To share. I mean, you know, this is a community as well. I know a lot of you have achieved some awesome things. You, some of you have already climbed Kili. Some, some of you have done Aconcagua. Uh, quite a lot of you have been, you know, climbed in in, in the Alps. Um, lots of you have been to Everest. You know, and it's great to um, to kind of talk about these things, um, especially when mindset is so powerful. Yeah, and it can make the difference. Um, you know, between success, exactly. uh, succeeding or not. I mean, we can talk about main double tans all day, but. Um, <laughs> You know, and it's always fun and enjoyable. It's my favorite part right. of any trip is buying all the gear. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's one of the things that we like to let people know about in advance because mm. some people do have these fears, but they're not, they don't always even talk about them. They keep them hidden and, but there's no need to, you know, this yeah. is, you know, you can sort this out. You can get your mind running right as well as the legs and, and you'll have an all the better trip for it. Yeah, definitely. Well, look, um, yeah, we'll leave it there. It's it's been been great, great to see so many of you on. It's nice for Mona and Jerome to get their bingo. I'm sure a lot of people have got bingo. It's nice today. To be in the same room as well. I've quite enjoyed this. It today. is, yeah. We'll probably do this I'm more warm. often. Um, it is warm. I I realise, and I think warm. hopefully now you can go to the toilet, which is good. Yeah, well, it's gone. Though. Luckily, I, I can't smell anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but look, no, it's been great having you all on. Uh, obviously, we'll be back next week. Uh, we hope that was really useful. Um, just a reminder. Ten pound deposit does end um, Thursday evening, so get yourself in there if you want to book any more awesome trips. Yeah. Um, and any questions, just drop them to info at evertrek.co.uk or the messenger um, little messenger on our website. But other than that, we'll see you next week. Take it easy. See ya. Now we're in the same room, Dave.